The Ajuran Sultanate, also spelled Ajuran Sultanate, and often simply as Ajuran was a Somali Muslim empire that ruled over large parts of the Horn of Africa in the Middle Ages. Through a strong centralized administration and an aggressive military stance towards invaders, the Ajuran Sultanate successfully resisted an Oromo invasion from the west and a Portuguese incursion from the east during the Gulmad and the Ajuran Portuguese Wars. Trading routes dating from the ancient and early medieval periods of Somali maritime enterprise were strengthened or re-established, and foreign trade and commerce in the coastal provinces flourished with ships sailing to and coming from many kingdoms and empires in East Asia, South Asia, Europe, the Near East, North Africa and East Africa. The empire left an extensive architectural legacy, being one of the major medieval Somali powers engaged in castle and fortress building. Many of the ruined fortifications dotting the landscapes of southern Somalia today are attributed to the Ajuran Sultanate's engineers, including a number of the pillar tomb fields, necropolises and ruined cities built in that era. During the Ajuran period, Many regions and people in the southern part of the Horn of Africa converted to Islam because of the theocratic nature of the government. The royal family, the House of Garin, expanded its territories and established its hegemonic rule through a skillful combination of warfare, trade linkages and alliances. As an hydraulic empire, the Ajuran Empire monopolized the water resources of the Shabel and Juba rivers. Through hydraulic engineering, it also constructed many of the limestone wells and cisterns of the state that are still operative in and use today. The tyrannical rule of the later Ajuran rulers caused multiple rebellions to break out in the empire, and at the end of the 17th century, the Ajuran state disintegrated into several successor kingdoms and states, the most prominent being the Jelidi Sultanate. Location the Ajuran Sultanate's sphere of influence in the Horn of Africa was one of the largest in the region, Origins and the House of Garan. The House of Garan was the ruling hereditary dynasty of the Ajuran Empire. Its origin lies in the Garan Kingdom that during the 13th century ruled the Ogaden, a region in the modern-day Somali region of Ethiopia. With the migration of Somalis from the northern half of the Horn region to the southern half, New cultural and religious orders were introduced that influenced the administrative structure of the dynasty, a system of governance which began to evolve into an Islamic government. Through their genealogical Baraka, which came from the Saint Ballad, the Garan rulers claimed supremacy and religious legitimacy over other groups in the Horn of Africa. Ballad's ancestors are said to have come from the historical northern region of Barbara. Administration the Ajuran nobility used many of the typical Somali aristocratic and court titles, with the Garan rulers styled imam. These leaders were the sultanate's highest authority and counted multiple sultans, emirs, and kings as clients or vassals. The Garan rulers also had seasonal palaces in Marig, Kiela for and Merka, which they would periodically visit to practice primi noctis. Other important cities in the Sultanate were Mogadishu and Barawa. The state religion was Islam, and thus law was based on Sharia. Imam, head of the state, Emir, commander of the armed forces and navy, Naibs, viceroys, wazirs, tax and revenue collectors, QADIs, chief judges, nomadic citizens and farming communities. Through their control of the region's wells, the Garan rulers effectively held a monopoly over their nomadic subjects as they were the only hydraulic empire in Africa during their reign. Large wells made out of limestone were constructed throughout the state, which attracted Somali and Oromo nomads with their livestock. The centralized regulations of the wells made it easier for the nomads to settle disputes by taking their queries to government officials who would act as mediators. Long-distance caravan trade, a long-time practice in the Horn of Africa, continued unchanged in Ajuran times. Today, numerous ruin and abandoned towns throughout the interior of Somalia and the Horn of Africa are evidence of a once-booming inland trade network, dating from the medieval period.
With the centralized supervision of the Ajuran Empire, farms in Afgoi, Kishmayur and other areas in the Jubur and Shabel valleys increased their productivity. A system of irrigation ditches known locally as Kelio fed directly from the Shabel and Jubba rivers into the plantations where sorghum, maize, beans, grain and cotton were grown during the Guan Xagaa seasons of the Somali calendar. This irrigation system was supported by numerous dikes and dams. To determine the average size of a farm, a land measurement system was also invented with moose, tarab and guldeed being the terms used. Taxation The state collected tributes from the farmers in the form of harvested products like dura, sorghum and buns, and from the nomads, cattle, camels and goats. The collecting of tribute was done by a wazir. Luxury goods imported from foreign lands were also presented as gifts to the Garan rulers by the coastal sultans of the state. A political device that was implemented by the Garan rulers in their realm was Ayus Primi Noctis, which enabled them to create marriages that enforced their hegemonic rule over all the important groups of the empire. The rulers would also claim a large portion of the bride's wealth, which at the time was 100 camels. For trade, the Ajuran Sultanate minted its own Ajuran currency. It also utilized the Mogadishan currency originally minted by the Sultanate of Mogadishu, which later became incorporated into the Ajuran Empire. Mogadishan coins have been found as far away as the present-day country of the United Arab Emirates in the Middle East. Urban and Maritime Centers The urban centers of Merka, Mogadishu, Barawa, and their respective ports became profitable trade outlets for commodities originating from the interior of the state. The farming communities of the hinterland brought their products to the coastal cities, where they were sold to local merchants who maintained a lucrative foreign commerce with ships sailing to and coming from Arabia, India, Venetia. Persia, Egypt, Portugal, and as far away as China, Vasco da Gama, who passed by Mogadishu in the 15th century, noted that it was a large city with houses of four or five stories high and big palaces in its center and many mosques with cylindrical minarets. In the 16th century, Duarte Barbosa noted that many ships from the Kingdom of Cambria sailed to Mogadishu with cloths and spices for which they in return received gold, wax and ivory. Barbosa also highlighted the abundance of meat, wheat, barley, horses, and fruit on the coastal markets, which generated enormous wealth for the merchants. Mogadishu, the center of a thriving weaving industry known as T.O.O.B. Benadir, together with Merka and Barawa also served as transit stops for Swahili merchants from Mombasa and Malindi and for the gold trade from Kilwa. Jewish merchants from the Hormuz also brought their Indian textile and fruit to the Somali coast in exchange for grain and wood. Trading relations were established with Malacca in the 15th century, with cloth, ambergris and porcelain being the main commodities of the trade. In addition, giraffes, zebras and incense were exported to the Ming Empire of China, making Somali merchants leaders in the commerce between Asia and Africa, and influencing the Chinese language on Somali in the process. Hindu merchants from Surat and Southeast African merchants from Pate seeking to bypass both the Portuguese blockade and Omani interference used the Somali ports of Merka and Barawa to conduct their trade in safety and without interference. Economy The Ajuran Sultanate relied on agriculture and trade for most of its income. Major agricultural towns were located on the Shabel and Jubba rivers, including Kishmayur and Afgoi, situated at the junction of some of the busiest medieval trade routes. The Ajuran Empire and its clients were active participants in the East African gold trade, the Silk Road commerce, trade in the Indian Ocean, and commercial enterprise as far as East Asia. The Ajuran Sultanate also minted its own Ajuran currency. Many ancient bronze coins inscribed with the names of Ajuran Sultans have been found in the coastal Benadir province. 
in addition to pieces from Muslim rulers of southern Arabia and Persia. Additionally, Mogadishan coins have been found as far as the United Arab Emirates in the Middle East. Trading routes dating from the ancient and early medieval periods of Somali maritime enterprise were strengthened or re-established, and foreign trade and commerce in the coastal provinces flourished with ships sailing to and coming from a myriad of kingdoms and empires in East Asia, South Asia, Europe, the Near East, North Africa and the Horn of Africa. Through the use of commercial vessels, compasses, multiple port cities, lighthouses and other technology, the merchants of the Adjuran Empire did brisk business with traders from the following states. Major cities The Adjuran state was an influential Somali kingdom that held sway over several cities and towns in central and southern Somalia during the Middle Ages. With the fall of the Sultanate, a number of these settlements continued to prosper, eventually becoming major cities in present-day Somalia. A few of these cities and towns were also abandoned or destroyed. Capitals Marig, Kielafor, Merka, port cities Mogadishu, Hobio, Barawa, Warshaik, other cities Afguoy, Badoa, Gondush, Hanisar, Rasbarbola, Culture. The Ajurans facilitated a rich culture with various forms of Somali culture such as architecture, astronomy, festivals, and dart were evolving and flourishing during this period. The majority of the inhabitants were ethnic Somali, but there was also a Yemeni, Persian, and Turkish minority. The vast majority of the population also inherited to Sunni Islam with a Shia minority. Somali was the most commonly used language while Arabic was used for trade and religious studies. The Somali martial artist Dunka, also known as Dabshed, was born during their reign. An annual tournament is held every year for it in Afguoy. Carving, known in Somali as Oris, was practiced in the coastal cities of the empire. The carvings on the mihrabs and pillars of ancient Somali mosques are some of the oldest on the continent with Masjid Fake Aldin being the seventh oldest mosque in Africa. Artistic carving was considered the province of men similar to how the Somali textile industry was mainly a women's business. Amongst the nomads, carving, especially woodwork, was widespread and could be found on the most basic objects such as spoons, combs and bowls but it also included more complex structures such as the portable nomadic house, the AQAL. During its tenure, the empire left an extensive architectural legacy, being one of the major medieval Somali power engaged in castle and fortress building. Many of the ruined fortifications dotting the landscapes of southern Somalia today are attributed to the Adjuran Sultanate's engineers. These structures include a number of pillar tomb fields, necropolizers, castles, fortresses and ruined cities built in that era. In the Marka area, various pillar tombs exist, which local tradition holds were built in the 16th century, when the Ajuran Sultanate's Naibs governed the district. Muslim Migration the late 15th and 17th centuries saw the arrival of Muslim families from Arabia, Persia, India and Spain to the Adjuran Empire, the majority of whom settled in the coastal provinces. Some migrated because of the instability in their respective regions, as was the case with the Hadrami families from the Yemen and the Muslims from Spain fleeing the Inquisition. Others came to conduct business or for religious purposes. Due to their strong tradition in religious learning, the new Muslim communities also enjoyed high status among the Somali ruling elite and commoners, and were frequently employed as religious advisors or received administrative positions, or served in the Ajuran army as soldiers and commanders. Military The Ajuran Empire had a standing army with which the Garan Imams and the governors ruled and protected their subjects. The bulk of the army consisted of Mamluk soldiers, who did not have any loyalties to the traditional Somali clan system, thereby making them more reliable. The soldiers were recruited from the inter-riverine area, other recruits came from the surrounding nomadic region. 
Arab, Persian and Turkish mercenaries were at times employed as well. In the early Ajurim period, the army's weapons consisted of traditional Somali weapons such as swords, daggers, spears, battle axe, and bows. The Sultanate received assistance from its close ally the Ottoman Empire, with the import of firearms through the Muzaffar port of Mogadishu. The army began acquiring muskets and cannons. The Ottomans would also remain a key ally during the Ajuran Portuguese Wars. Forces used for military purposes were also raised in the interior, and numerous stone fortifications were erected to provide shelter for the army in the coastal districts. In each province, the soldiers were under the supervision of a military commander known as an emir, and the coastal areas and the Indian Ocean trade were protected by a navy. Ajur in Portuguese Wars The European Age of Discovery brought Europe's then superpower the Portuguese Empire to the coast of East Africa, which at the time enjoyed a flourishing trade with foreign nations. The wealthy southeastern city-states of Kilwa, Mombasa, Malindi, Pate and Lamu were all systematically sacked and plundered by the Portuguese. Tristeo da Cunha then set his eyes on Ajuran territory, where the Battle of Barawa was fought. After a long period of engagement, the Portuguese soldiers burned the city and looted it. However, fierce resistance by the local population and soldiers resulted in the Portuguese's failure to permanently occupy the city, and the inhabitants who had fled to the interior would eventually return and rebuild the city. After Barawa, Tristeo would set sail for Mogadishu, which was the richest city on the East African coast. But word had spread of what had happened in Barawa, and a large troop mobilization had taken place. Many horsemen, soldiers and battleships in defense positions were now guarding the city. Nevertheless, Tristeo still opted to storm an attempt to conquer in the city, although every officer and soldier in his army opposed this, fearing certain defeat if they were to engage their opponents in battle. Tristeo heeded their advice and sailed for Socotra instead. After the battle, the city of Barawa quickly recovered from the attack. Over the next several decades, Somali-Portuguese tensions would remain high and the increased contact between Somali sailors and Ottoman corsairs worried the Portuguese who sent a punitive expedition against Mogadishu under João de Sepulveda, which was unsuccessful. Ottoman-Somali cooperation against the Portuguese in the Indian Ocean reached a high point in the 1580s when Adjuran clients of the Somali coastal cities began to sympathize with the Arabs and Swahili under Portuguese rule and sent an envoy to the Turkish corsair Mir Ali Bey for a joint expedition against the Portuguese. He agreed and was joined by a Somali fleet, which began attacking Portuguese colonies in southeast Africa. The Somali Ottoman offensive managed to drive out the Portuguese from several important cities such as Pate, Mombasa and Kilwa. However, the Portuguese governor sent envoys to Portuguese India requesting a large Portuguese fleet. This request was answered and it reversed the previous offensive of the Muslims into one of defense. The Portuguese Armada managed to retake most of the lost cities and began punishing their leaders. But they refrained from attacking Mogadishu securing the site's autonomy in the Indian Ocean. The Ajuran's Somali forces would eventually militarily defeat the Portuguese. The Ottoman Empire would also remain an economic partner of the Somalis. Throughout the 16th and 17th centuries successive Somali sultans defied the Portuguese economic monopoly in the Indian Ocean by employing a new coinage which followed the Ottoman pattern, thus proclaiming an attitude of economic independence in regard to the Portuguese, a Romo invasion, in the mid-17th century. The Oromo nation began expanding from its homeland around Lake Obaya in southern Ethiopia towards the southern Somali coast at the time when the Ajuran Empire was at the height of its power. The Garan rulers conducted several military expeditions known as the Gal Madaw Wars against the Oromo warriors. 
converting those that were captured to Islam. The Ajuran Empire's military supremacy forced the Oromo conquerors to reverse their migrations towards the Christian Solomonids and the Muslim Adalites, devastating the two warring empires in the process. Decline and successor states The Ajuran Empire slowly declined in power at the end of the 17th century, which paved the way for the ascendance of new Somali powers. The most prominent setbacks against the state were the dethronement of the Muzaffar clients in Mogadishu and other coastal cities by the Hawiya, Hirab king. Taxation and the practice of prime noctis were the main catalysts for the revolts against Ajuran rulers. The loss of port cities and fertile farms meant that much-needed sources of revenue were lost to the rebels.